Hello and welcome everyone. And we are in July. It's the end of the year. Um, Ross, Jordan, how have your year been? Yeah, it's been very different, I think. And it sounds like a cliche now, but it has been very different to what we expected when we all ran for election back when lockdown started last March. I think coming into sports president year in a pandemic where no sport was happening was quite daunting, but we managed to get things done. It's been really successful um, regardless. And I think that's something to be really proud of is looking back, and especially as a team where we didn't know what the year was going to look like and we've made such a success of it still. I yeah. think a really good opportunity to work on lots of other stuff that we wouldn't probably have been able to work on before. A lot of reasons to be happy with the year. Um, you know, it's been a successful year and uh, the success of you all is largely done to being able to work for you guys. Um, but it's been a good year, uh, very different to my first year. So, but uh, rather than looking at it as sort of an issue or a problem, um, so we saw it as an opportunity to like, you know, learn new skills, do things a little bit differently. Um, and it's just been enjoyable, really. Um, although I'd wish that we hadn't had to do it all like behind, you know, screen and all of that. But you know, it's been for the best um, interest of ourselves, the greater good, keeping everyone safe. Um, but in terms of, you know, stuff we've been able to work on, you know, we were able to succeed with projects like One RG, Many Nations, uh, Black History Month, setting up of the Black Liberation Network. Do you want to talk about your sports stuff? Yeah, I think in, as I say, like in semester one, we really didn't know what was going to happen. So even to get sport up and going, we had all 30 clubs return to some form of training, which was great. And then a couple got some friendly activity as well. So it was really good to see. And the importance of physical activity was extremely known throughout the whole of the pandemic and throughout the whole of lockdown to be able to facilitate that for students that were in Aberdeen was, was really successful and something to look back on with pride and especially to the committees and the students that managed to get it all going. Um, a real highlight of semester one especially. Um, we're There's talking some free about gym membership in there as well. Uh, no. Yeah, there was some free gym membership in there. I was about to mention that. How do you say highlight and not talk about free gym membership? What are some of your highlights, Ross? One of the, the things that I've really enjoyed working on this year, which is maybe slightly different to what would have been if, if we hadn't had the year that we've had is that kind of communication side and working, it maybe sounds a little bit boring, but working on all of the, the COVID-related comms that have gone out from back in the beginning, the student orientation, the kind of training for coming back on campus, all of the stuff around that, some of the very late night calls that we've had with the three of us and Greg and <laughs> um, Phil from the university as well around just responding to government briefings, responding to government announcements mm -hmm. as well. So. Um, yeah, it's not what we were, uh, not really what expected in terms of that comm side and the usual um, communication, but it has been a really good experience in, in terms of trying to work out a way to, I think, communicate to students what it means for them and what it also probably means for us and a lot of the activities that we do. Okay. But then, as you say as well, some of the different campaigns, the Write Your Rent campaign um, around student housing and student halls specifically, um, the the period poverty campaign and the, the free sanitary products and some of the others yeah. that we got to work on in semester one as well. Great stuff, Ross. Uh, you did speak about um, Freshers Week, kind of. And before we go like really deep into uh, the campaigns and some of the things we've enjoyed, uh, you know, Freshers Week highlights, what are some of your highlights? Well, it seems like so long it's ago. It's crazy, isn't it? I know. To think back, it was great to see the the work that all of the our student societies and sports clubs and student groups and networks put into it. I think we obviously put on a whole host of events and it was really useful to have RGU more involved in it as a university. I think previously Freshers has been very much the union's activities and the university have focused on their kind of traditional two hour induction sessions and that's really been it apart from classes and, and those activities starting. So we, w some of the work that we did on the lead up to Freshers especially was building in RGU's support services into the programme and the different activities they can put on and that definitely has its challenges as well. There's a lot of kind of new people involved in a lot of, especially when you get into the university looking at their various different departments and the different individuals leading and, and all of these types of things. So that was obviously quite a challenge in its own right in terms of bringing everyone together and still having that fun aspect and having all of the evening sessions and they were virtual but having the, the various different the um, Netflix parties and the some of the kind of more live events as well but mm -hmm. I think by the end of it it was it all worked really successfully I think 
we had over 100 sessions one of them had technical difficulties and mm. the rest kind of went down very well and had great feedback from students but fingers crossed that for those students coming in in the next year there, there'll be a lot more in-person social activities I hear you did pretty well in one of the quizzes Ross no <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but thanks for bringing that up you're yeah. welcome <laughs> uh, well from your point of view um, Jordan what are some of your highlights in terms of freshness I think kind of what Ross said but also the fair itself like that whole online platform of all the small tents and although we'd normally be in the hall and it'd be buzzing with music (laughs) and sponsors and whatever um I think all the clubs and societies and groups really took it on themselves to make sure it was the best it could be um and really promoting it and making sure that students had access to the opportunities regardless of the fact that it was all online Hmm. um and they all made some pretty cool presentations shared photos and just made the best of a bad situation I was really proud of them for that um and just being able to see all students come together and it looked pretty nice too I know right we had a good freshers, freshers week, freshers period. I well, think from my perspective, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, from my perspective, it's just the whole possibility of being able to put together you know, a program that carried both welcome freshers and then induction all together in yeah. one space and see how much new students are engaged with freshers as is. Um, the opportunity to... You know, I didn't think about it that much in the beginning, but by the end of freshers, we had reached an even wider pool of students. You know, even though we're doing it all virtually and not even met people in person, but um, and having all of all those different events that were put up still being available all year round, and people yeah. can still like access information around that. I think it's just absolutely fabulous. Um, getting the university to be involved in the st- things we're doing in the fun aspect as well. It's very, very interesting. And I keep pushing campaigns to the back and sorry, I'm not even the host of this. So <laughs> you I did a pretty good job, so you can <laughs> keep it. <laughs> but uh, allow me to call myself a very terrible host. But in terms of, you know, sort of what we do, I think that's one thing people a lot of the time don't get to see. And there's a very popular saying amongst um, sabbaticals around, you know, to say, if you've never been a sabbatical president, if you've never been sabbatical officer, you don't know what it's like. And so maybe this is an opportunity to sort of get people to have a, an, a bit of inside idea of some of the things we, we do on a day to day or generally. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure we'll do a very terrible job about explaining it because so... I you going to say day to day. It's going to explain yourself. <laughs> but uh, maybe we could try it. So maybe, Ross, maybe from your from your perspective, just a little bit of give a window to, to people to understand what, what does it entail to be in your role and how you've managed this year, basically. Yeah, I think it is difficult. I think we're coming to the end of the year now and we've got that handover period to the, to the incoming team and even just trying to sit down and write about the year and all the stuff we should hand over, it's. I think the the reason it's so hard to understand and to have a to to realise is because you work with so many different people, almost every department across the university, all the schools with the the kind of heads of school and the the key um, academics within there, but then also the support staff as well. Um, I just want to unpick something really, really okay. like that interesting that I find. Um, you know, we all work together to for yeah. a common goal. But what would top three things that you'd say are have been the most maybe interesting things about the role for you, and then things another three things you find you know maybe you struggled with or find a bit difficult maybe in the beginning or in the middle or on the end. I think in terms of that interesting side, and because you put me in a spot, I'm definitely going to miss out a few things. But I think. The most interesting bit is obviously that working with our societies and our student groups and a lot of the events and activities that we put on. Obviously, this year we've not been able to have the traditional events and activities, but it's been great to see both from the unions, the union side and the amazing work that our staff team do to, to support as well in terms of the events, the virtual turning everything online. You touched on it with the Freshers' Fair, and there's been really some amazing examples throughout the year of different ways that we've been able to host what would usually be um, in-person events but put them into that online environment so I, I really enjoy that side of it and seeing students interact I think is, is really good as well we put a lot of work in almost behind the scenes in these roles and I, I know that the, the team the staff team at the union especially it's a lot of that kind of planning and getting everything ready so it's really good to see when students come in and when they take part and when when they enjoy it as well I think is the main thing I think the other side of it is obviously that working with the university and I think well of course it's been a really difficult year for many students and many staff it's mm-hmm. 
it's allowed for that opportunity to look at what how we all operate both at the union and the university and how we can maybe pick the good parts from this year and from before um, and we talk about the new normal and all of these types of things <laughs> as, as awful as it is it's, it's how we can make sure that we don't go back to to what we are we talk about it a lot of the union and that for example our democratic activities so our general meeting our forums they weren't accessible to online distance learners just because yeah. they were in a room um, or they weren't accessible to online distance learners that lived outside of Aberdeen or outside of the UK. Um, so all of these types of things, I think it will allow us to find that almost hybrid model or blended as if there's another <laughs> buzzword there, um, to, look at, to look at how we can do that going forward. Solid. And I'm just not going to talk about the downside yet. We can come on to that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? In terms of highlights of the year? Well, I mean... Or benefits? Highlights, benefits, some of, you know, talk about your role, okay. how, what you what you do day to day all in one yeah so the sport world day to day is a lot more operational there's like a lot more stuff that has to happen it's not as fluid in terms of just kind of go off and do things if you don't book facilities then clubs don't train if you don't book buses then clubs don't go anywhere um and although that hasn't really happened this past year it's still worth noting that's a big part of the job and then also the wider university piece of advocating sport and physical activity which is kind of where that free student gym membership thing came from mm. was making sport and physical activity accessible as well that's, that's very true I mean, there's no way you'd be praised for sports and physical activity and you wouldn't like sports and physical activity. It would be, well, it'd be a bit rogue, but I'm sure it's happened before. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be praised for sports and physical activity. Mm-hmm. You no. like football? Well, I mean, I'm not that bad. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that no. a good endorsement, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that bad. Yeah. Is this where I talk about my own room? Yeah, yeah. You know, we want to hear about <laughs> yours now. And you've done it for two years, so you've got two I different lo- outlooks I on know, it. right? And then maybe what the biggest differences have been between mm. your or the first six months of your first year and the <laughs> last kind of 18 months, which has been... <laughs> Thank you for spacing out really well. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, education and welfare, two massive remits, um, almost impossible to do without the support of, you know, constant democracy and sports and physical activity, working together as a team. It's been an amazing experience um, and... To be honest, I want to say I've loved every single bit of it. Um, even though that might look like a tall statement to make, but or someone some people might not believe that, but I have actually enjoyed every single moment of it. Um, you know, from day one till now. First six months was, you know, very much in person and the way we used to think about how we used to deliver things was very much different from how we've delivered it in the last 18 months and it's been an absolute experience learning how to then change how you think of doing an event or a campaign or project to doing it in a way where you know it's it's online you're keeping people safe you're you know and all of that and um i can say the th- maybe things i enjoyed i've enjoyed about the role is you know um working with the different teams school officers, equality champions, institutional associate trainers, um, uh, reps, um, alongside working with you guys who are the primary team and then the wider executive. Um, it's an absolute experience. I'm a soccer for team, uh, you know, teamwork. I'm, I'm, I like teamwork, working as a team. So um, I think that's one part I really enjoy, just being able to work with different sets of people and be able to map out different projects and then look at how you know, map out an action plan in terms of achieving that project and then actually achieving the project itself. Um, I really enjoyed that. I think the other part I've really, really enjoyed on a day-to-day is sub-exec, um, working with you guys, um, you know, being able to work together on so many different things, get advice, um, and just talk about different things at different times. It's really good. Um, and how we work around these different projects is is massive. I'm sure you'd, you'd attest to that. Oh, yeah, totally. And I think the other part that I'm, I'm quite passionate about that, you know, supporting students at different times of their academic journey, because, um, you know, I was fortunate to get, you know, some levels of support during my own experience. And uh, at some other times, I didn't get it. And that, you know, has been my drive to, like, support others. But from your perspective as a sports person, and then especially continuing into you know this yeah myself and ross um would not be continuing with you what what are you looking forward most to i think in-person activity has to be the thing and i think we're in a good place that sport probably will take place from semester one into into semester two and also 
aspects of competition as well. So I think after all the hard work that students put in the last year and all the online fitness classes and different stuff that they had to deal with and um, supported and really ran with all of their hearts, I think they deserve the opportunity to get back out there and compete. Um, even if they do rubbish, I really like. I don't think anyone could care less if they finish last in the leagues and lose all their games, as long as they've had the opportunity to be in person and do sport. And also just to see students on campus again. It's been so, so quiet and so strange. Um, so just to have the buzz about the place again would be really nice, I think. I, I think I would agree the same. Just seeing people in person, seeing the campus, com- like life on campus as well would be really great. But you, Ross, you've had, a, you've had an amazing year. Um, and th- my question to you would be, what what would you miss the most about the role? You know, just con- apart from anything COVID necessarily yeah. related, apart from you know, we, I'm we've not gonna miss COVID to be fair. And yeah. apart from us, so that's the obvious. Uh, thing. Apart from us, that's very. Real. I know you miss. Me that's a given. It's fine. I think definitely the people. I think I know you said not to say that, but I think especially in a year like this, we've worked together so closely. So I think it, it is going to be weird not doing that and not working with you guys and the staff team as well and. Um, really all the people that we work to at the, the, the university as well, I think working with the, the various students that we get to work with as well, the both from our societies and our student groups uh, and all of the, the different students that you both work with, but also our vice presidents, our wider team, um, who have done an, a, a, a really good job this year in quite difficult circumstances. I'm delighted to see some of them staying on, obviously with Jordan as well leading on that, um, staying on to next year, and I think there'll be some really great opportunities going forward for the union and for the exec and for the, the, the team as well in terms of as we get hopefully past the current level of restrictions and start to get back to on campus and and yeah I think I'll just throw that question right back to you Emmanuel obviously you've been a president for two years now you were a vice president before that and a student before that so what's it how was how are we feeling at, the, at this stage I suppose with only a few days left and and looking out to what's next. Are you going to make me cry? Speechless. <laughs> I mean, it's been an absolute experience for me. Um, I came in as an international student, not knowing anybody in Aberdeen, not just Aberdeen, in Scotland, in the UK at all. Um, and I can't, you know, I kept asking myself, why did I pick RGU? And I mean, I almost, it was just, maybe it's just my love for Popo. I don't know <laughs> because I barely knew anything or anyone and I you know I was just impressed by my course and you know the offerings in my course and I just decided to come here when I came to Aberdeen and you know first day I came on campus the first thing I was looking for after you know finishing enrollment was a student union I just wanted to you know see what's like see if it's still the same and you know Obviously, I've been able to meet fantastic people like you guys and make lifelong friendships, you know, and be able to get a platform, really, as a student president, um, you know, uh, to be able to, you know, work on things I'm passionate about and things I'd like to bring change about to the institution on, but also develop my own skills as a person. Um, There's so many things I didn't use to know how to do. Or have an idea existed, <laughs> um, but I have managed to, you know, hone them, know them, grow the skills. Um, despite working as a student president, working with you guys, and working in two very two different kind of years, mm-hmm. so it's been an absolute experience for me. Um, I don't know what else to say about it though, uh, but I don't want to cry, so maybe I'll just pass it oh. to Jordan. Yeah, don't cry. Yeah, we're on to you now. So. What highlights of the experience? Yeah, so you're obviously staying for another year. Yeah. What What have you enjoyed most about this year? And what and you've talked about what you're looking forward to about next year, but what are you going to take forward? Yeah, I think you mentioned it in terms of the use of online. I think that's been really effective. And we managed to train all of our committee members fully, completely, as it was online, because otherwise you can't get them all in a room at the same time. So I think we'll keep that forward. And it is, makes it more accessible to students that maybe aren't on campus or learning away from campus. And or potentially just don't quite feel safe or ready to come back, they still have access to all the training that everyone else would. Um, and being able to house that online as well is really helpful and people can refer back to it as well. Um, and in terms of like behind the scenes stuff, we've done a lot of work on policies and handbook and information for clubs, which sounds super boring, but is going to be extremely helpful moving forward just to ensure that everyone's coming back with a clear understanding as to what's expected of them, but also what they can expect from us. Um, and they know kind of where they're sitting and where they stand in all activity. But yeah, just to make things happen, I think it'd be nice to see. 
Um, but we've done a lot of work this year to make sure that, that everything is as solid as can be. So fingers crossed, all pulls off. And the various training and different things we've implemented in terms of club culture, um, it's all been happening online. So we haven't really seen it happen in person yet. But hopefully when students do return to sport and activity that we've got a positive culture that's kind of naturally grown from some time away as well. I think as well, before we, before we finish off as well, as, as sad as it is that we are leaving and very sad about that, but I think the f- from the union's point of view and from the students' union, the, the great thing about it is that every one year, every two years, we get a new team in and we get some new student leaders in who are up for, who have some great ideas and um, things that they think could be changed in both within the union and the university. So I don't know, Emmanuel, if you maybe want to talk about the new team that coming in to replace us and then some of our vice presidents. Yeah, um, I think... I always go back to talking about it's a real opportunity, it's a real opportunity. But um, we've we've done our bit. There's a popular saying back home in Nigeria where I'm from that um, soldier come, soldier go, the barracks remain. And what that means is, you know, you contribute your own quota and, you know, it's all a process, it's a journey. Um, I think, sad as it is, that, you know, we both have to leave the role. Um, I'm delighted and I feel fulfilled, and I, I, I believe you, you feel the same as well, at the amount of work that I've been able to do and contribute to the student union, its purpose and its responsibilities and obligations to students in the time that we've been in the role. But, you know, that's a real opportunity for the new team who, you know, were coming in with fresh ideas, um, fresh motivation and drive. Um, and, you know, there's, I think they've got really good ideas. Um, and working together, obviously, with fantastic Jordan, who's got experience of working with us and will be working with them as well. And then they'll work as a team. Um, the sky is is it even the limit. Um, you know, I don't think there's a limit at all. So um, very optimistic for the new team, very optimistic for the new year, very optimistic for the union going forward. Um, and I think very proud that we've been able to contribute and then ex- inspire other people to into the rules as well so it's a, it's a massive achievement but you know, Jordan congratulations on your new team um, and fingers crossed for you guys to achieve the best you know best things even more greater things that we've achieved this year in the new year definitely we've got shining examples to follow and I think that's shown in the recent election and the number of people that ran for positions is obviously the exposure that you've put on them and the achievements that you've had you've inspired people to take on the role and, and have their own opportunities so so good luck leading them on. Thanks, and all the best for you two. Good well, luck. Thank you. Look after yourselves. Thank you so. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. What are we saying? Um, I mean, we're at the end. Is there any more to say? <laughs> Just bye. Bye. Well, we normally say it in one accord in the past. So okay. Should we try and see if we can get it together this time? You can go. Three, two, one. Bye. bye. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awkward. Should we wave? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. Bye. Bye. Oh, are we actually waiting? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Three, two, one. Bye. Bye.